I'm John Riley, the Director of Product Development here at Trek Bicycle, and I'm super excited to introduce to you Gen 2 of the Super Caliber. The original Super Caliber was introduced in 2019. The goal of that project was to combine the features of a hardtail with the features of a full suspension bike, adding the pedaling efficiency, but the compliance of a full suspension bike into one. With that, we introduced some really cool new technologies like IsoStrut, which allowed for really good pedaling efficiency, and Flex Days, which allowed for really good compliance when the terrain got rough. This was received really well by the racers. We went on to win gold medals in the Olympics, world championships, and numerous World Cups. So of course, when we looked at the next generation of that, we were looking for additional ways we could even make that bike faster and more performance oriented. And to do that, Chris Drews, who is the director of this project, made a lot of great changes. How about we bring him on and talk to him about what things are new on the Gen 2 Super Caliber. Chris, how's it going? Great, thanks, John. Awesome. So big project for you, you know, updating the Super Caliber. But I think the real question is why? Why did we upgrade the Super Caliber? Yeah, so, you know, World Cup courses are only getting more technical. The racers are demanding more. Uh, we want to simply build the fastest bike for them. And, you know, building a fast bike is really hard, but staying the fastest bike is even harder. So, you know, we took a really long look at the things that would make a fast bike, and we started with travel. We bumped the travel significantly on this bike. We also made adjustments to the geometry. And we also took a chunk of weight out of the bike, as you'll see later on. We have two levels of the frame now, and we have a new ISO strut from RockShock. Includes sag gradients on there, so it's easier to set up, and that new ISO strut works awesome. All right, Chris, I gotta agree. Those are good reasons to make changes, and uh, it sounds like the bike is awesome. But, you know, really, let's maybe ask somebody who's really fast about the bike and what she thinks of those changes. Let's talk to Yolanda Neff and see what she thinks about the new bike. We wanted to bring you in uh, because you are obviously a very important part of our race team and a very important part of product development. And especially since you tend to be one of the better, more technical riders, uh, we definitely wanted to have you be part of any product development we did. And we introduced the Super Caliber in 2019. You were actually part of that launch that we did. And I uh, just wanted to see, like, what were your first impressions of the Super Caliber when we first introduced it to you? Yeah, I still remember even when I uh, joined Trek, um, we were already talking about that new bike that was coming, that was a completely new concept, something w the world hasn't seen before in cross-country racing. So that was already very exciting for me before I even joined the team, because I knew Trek has been working on this bike for years and years. And you guys had all the ideas and you were testing and trying. And so when the bike finally came out and came alive, that was my first year racing for Trek. That was amazing. And um, yeah, the bike definitely lived up to the expectations and it was a game changer. I think, you know, working with you too, you know, we wanted something that was kind of like a one bike quiver, you know, so that you didn't have to switch between hardtails and full suspension bikes. And do you think it delivered on that promise? 100%. Yes. I mean, for me, it's a it's a no brainer. Ever since I had that bike, I never raced a hardtail anymore. I didn't even have a hardtail anymore. Because to me on every single course, you will find bumpy bits on the grass, um, in the forest, roots, everything. So the Super Calibre is always an advantage. So we launched the bike in 2019 and you, you come to the team and now we've had a few years to today um, on the bike. Do you have any specific memories of the bike that uh, are very fond memories for you? For sure. I mean, the Olympic Games is something I will never forget. That was um, ever since we talked about that bike, we knew that for the Olympic Games, for that track, it would be amazing because it was very steep so you needed a light bike in the climbs and yet there were big big drops and jumps so you did want to have suspension in the rear and we were really the only um, track was the only brand who had a bike like that that was capable of attacking the climbs and also attacking the descent so it was for me it was the dream bike and um, yeah Tokyo was the dream race for me and everything felt just um Absolutely amazing. That was that was the dream bike on the dream track. Courses are even getting tougher, right? I mean, it's not getting any easier. The courses are getting rougher. 
they're adding more features, more drops, things like that. So from 2019 to now, are there things that you've thought about, like if they just did this or they just did that, that might help me even more into the future with racing, with the way the courses are being designed and laid out nowadays? Every course is always like evolving a little bit. Like even just last week in Lanzerheide, they added like two new sections to the course that were not there before. And for example, Val di Sol last year, when we came back, there was a whole new section in the forest that was really rough and technical that has not been there before. So I feel like every course designer is constantly trying to make it a bit better, a bit more technical and the better your bike is, the more you can actually take take advantage of that and the more you benefit from the tracks, how they are. So, yeah, I, I really feel like having a slightly more capable bike um, is just going to be a benefit across all tracks and it's going to help you no matter where you go. Like, I think we started off at an absolutely amazing point with the Super Calibre. It was all we could wish for back then. And now as we have kept racing it um, for a couple of years, we can see tiny bits that we would love to change. And um, one of the things is to have a tiny bit more travel in the rear. So we want to keep the same concept. We want to still have it as a very light bike and that very special ISO strut that goes into the frame and really works together with the frame. Even the rear part of the frame is bending as well. So it's part of the whole suspension system. Um, yeah. But to have a tiny bit more travel in the rear, that would be what we would wish for to make it maybe, if possible, still one touch lighter. And also the geometry, it's already great geometry, but little updates on the geometry, like there's just tiny little things that to change them, it will make the bike even better. Well, that's awesome because, you know, from my seat in the product department, a lot of what you talk about when racing is important to us so that we can listen and hopefully make changes. And so we were able to take a lot of the feedback from you and the team over the last few years. And we now have an updated version that uh, we had you get on one of the prototypes of that. And we, I think, address some of the things there. And do you think that the new bike, you know, is addressing the needs of kind of the, the latest type of courses that you have in the World Cups? Yes, for sure. I feel like it's a great development. I feel like it's it still has all the characteristics that we know from the Super Caliber, like it still handles in a similar way. But yet you feel that, for example, when you do a bunny hop, like when you preload the bike and you take off, it responds a bit differently and you get a bit more out of it and you're just able to really like take it with you in the corners. It, it just goes a bit faster, like if you do the same trail. Um, you just feel a little bit more comfortable. You get a little bit more out of the bike. And I, I feel like this is exactly what we need for, for the World Cup tracks. They are getting more challenging and a little more suspension will help while we still want to keep all the benefits of the, the, the Super Caliber. And I think, you know, even though we were focused on the performance of the bike, you know, taking a chunk of weight out of the bike, I think helps always, right? Because there's tons of climbing in the courses. And so anything we can do to reduce the weight, um, I think that's something that, that we tried to work on very hard without losing the benefits of some of the things that you like about the bike. Again, appreciate the time. And as always, we wish you the best of luck in every every race and every event that you do. Yeah, thank you so much. And no worries. And thank you very much to the whole team for working so hard to make the best product. Um, it's always a pleasure to test new products. And I love racing your bikes, no matter which one. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. As always, it's awesome hearing from Yolanda and all the things that she likes about the new bike. And she talks about a lot of different things there. And we want to dive into those details now. So for that, I want to bring on Alex Martin. Alex Martin is the senior engineer involved in this project. Uh, this has been a passion project from hit for him for the last couple of years. He's a fast guy himself and uh, really poured his heart and soul into it. And Alex, with this bike, you know, a lot of new in the bike, a lot of things Yolanda talked about, but let's dive into the details. What, what did we do new with the Gen 2 Super Caliber? Absolutely. So the first thing Chris pointed out is we increased the travel on the bike. So Gen 1 Super Caliber has 60 millimeters of rear wheel travel. We've increased that to 80 millimeters. 
Up front, we've increased from 100 to 110 millimeter fork. Riders will have the choice of going up to 120 or down to 100, which I'll get into a little bit later. But off the bat, 80 at the back, 110 up front. Something that we heard a lot of from riders is the current Super Caliber is really great pedaling efficiency. And we wanted to hold on to that. But something that we got feedback of where we wanted to improve was the overall capability of the bike, especially in descents or really chunky, rooty climbs or flat sections. And that's where our athletes felt like they could use a little bit more. And they're seeing a lot more of that on current courses, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. The courses are getting really technical, both at the World Cup level and then just you know general privateer racing. Yep. So in, in addition to, we didn't just increase the travel. We focused in on the kinematics and the small bump sensitivity with the strut. So one of the first things we did is increase the overall leverage ratio of the bike, giving the rear wheel a little bit more leverage over that shock, which is really helping with small bump compliance. So you'll be riding and it's just a lot smoother than the first bike was, but still very much efficient. In addition to increasing the leverage rate, we also uh, increased the progression of the bike to help with bottom out resistance. We've done that both with the instantaneous leverage rate and also with the air spring and the strut, which we'll also get into a little bit later. Another area that we found improvement, especially with the pedaling efficiency, is a lot of racers are running bigger chain rings. And part of that is, you know, for faster courses um, or to, you know, maybe bias somewhere in the, in the rear cassette. And something that that does is it, it decreases your anti-squat, which is attributed to the pedaling efficiency of the bike. So anticipating more riders and racers using bigger chain rings, we increase the anti-squat on the new Super Caliber, maintaining that pedal efficiency of Gen 1. Wow, that's a lot in itself, but we even have more to talk about. Definitely. So like Chris mentioned, we made some pretty key but subtle geometry changes. So, you know, there's the lower, longer, slacker story that gets thrown around on a bunch of different bikes. And that's certainly applicable for specific categories, but on a cross-country bike, especially cross-country Olympic, the riders are so in tune with their fit that we didn't want to make geometry changes that would have biomechanical consequences. So one of the things that we did do to help with the descending capability of the bike is we slackened the head angle to 67 and a half degrees. Gen 1 Super Caliber had a 69 degree head angle. And what that's done is just help the bike get up and over and out of the way of obstacles a bit quicker, give the riders a little bit more capability and control at speed on flats and on descents. We did increase the reach very slightly, mainly just to keep that seated position that the riders are going for so they can keep really efficient, smooth and consistent power transfer. We increased the rear chainstay length by about five millimeters. And what that's done is it helps with climbing traction, getting the rider a little bit more centered on the bike so they can keep traction and power at that rear wheel without the front wheel lifting up. And then also it helps turn initiation. With increasing the travel to 80 millimeters, we wanted to take a, a new look at the bottom bracket height. So we actually increased the bottom bracket height by about seven millimeters, which has helped reduce the occurrence of pedal strikes that riders are seeing on technical really chunky courses. The bike comes stock with a 110 millimeter fork and that's what we designed the geometry around. But that was with anticipation of giving riders and racers the option to fine tune their geometry with the fork length without the weight penalty of a minnow link or other sort of geometry adjust features. So if a rider wants a little bit slacker head angle uh, for more aggressive terrain, they can run a 120 millimeter fork. Conversely, if a rider prefers a more traditional XC geometry, they can go down to a 100 millimeter fork, which will steepen the head tube angle by about a half a degree. And one thing we did with that is that will give you a very similar BB height to the existing Gen 1 Super Caliber, but with a little bit slacker head angle. Awesome. Sounds like a lot of cool geometry changes to make the bike as versatile as ever. Absolutely. Awesome. So Alex, we have a new ISO strut from RockShock. So let's talk about that. Yeah, definitely. So that was really key to this overall package of increasing travel and capability and efficiency of the bike was, was working with RockShox on this. And one nice thing about that is they were able to leverage a lot of existing parts from their Sidlux platform and also the Zeb with the bushing. So we had to increase the stroke of the shock to account for the longer travel. So we now have a 40 millimeter stroke shock that uses some of the damper components from their Sidlux platform. To help with bottom out resistance, we increase the progression of that spring curve, which riders can further tune uh, by adding or removing volume tokens similar to the current bike. 
Um, another thing that we did is we increased the diameter to 38 millimeters. Mm. And that had a, a few benefits. Uh, from the frame side of things, it improved the torsional and lateral stiffness of the entire frame package. So we're holding on to that really stiff frame that the current super caliber gave for efficiency and also for control. On the shock performance side of things, it allowed for a larger piston for better oil flow and just overall better shock performance. Another thing that is really neat about the RockShox strut is we have etchings, like you mentioned before, to help riders set up their sag, which on a you know, high performance short travel bike, your sag is critical to what's gonna happen out on the trail. So our preferred setup is 25% sag. We feel like that offers a really great blend of pedal efficiency and small bump compliance, and also capability while descending. But we, we found through all of our testing, there's a really useful range of sag. So say that a rider is on a, a really smooth, flowy, fast course, or it's a short race, like a short track, something less than 30 minutes, we recommend going down as low as 20% sag, which is gonna give you a, a, a firmer ride, more pedal efficiency, um, but conversely, if you're on really rough terrain, super chunky, maybe very downhill focused, or it's a long event like a marathon or a 24 hour race, you can go up to about 30% sag. You'll still have pedal efficiency, but you have a lot more bump response um, and just overall control that's gonna uh, reduce fatigue and give you more confidence on those in the gnarlier terrain. And I know you, know, you also looked at even you know, serviceability of the shock mm -hmm. and making it even you know, easier to service than before. Let's talk about that because I think that's key as well. Absolutely. So, you know, from the, the TFR mechanics to the privateer racers to the technicians at the shop, um, we wanted to improve the serviceability of the strut. So there are no specific tools required um, or custom one-off tools to service the strut itself. Just a four millimeter Allen key um, to access the air spring to put in or remove tokens. And then with that, there's no, we no longer need like a, a special clocking to align the rebound dial and the compression lockout. It's a flanged interface, four bolts come out, four bolts go back in. I guarantee you there's a mechanic right now who's doing a little, uh, little applause. Hopefully. To thank you for that uh, feature as well. So everything was looked at, um, all adding up to just a ton of versatility and that's Isostrut. All right, Alex, another key thing that every racer asks about bike weight. And I know you spent a lot of time looking at the weight of this bike and reducing the, the weight of the bike. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. So similar to kinematics, we re revisited everything when it came to the frame design to hit the aggressive weight target that Chris gave us. So it all started with revisiting every frame shape, top tube, seat tube, down tube, seat stay, chain stay. It was an incredible effort by our engineering team, our industrial design team, and our analysis team. So we used a couple of different optimization softwares to look at what are some of the most optimal shapes. So we had a, a really light package with Gen 1 Super Caliber, but we knew that there was opportunity to pull weight out. And so we feel the best way is to look at your frame shapes before we even get to materials. So we optimized, like I said, every tube on the bike um, for torsional rigidity. Um, we revisited the seat stay shapes to allow for even better per suspension performance and overall robustness of the fuselage and so we worked closely with id to still have you know a really nice aesthetic but a light structure working with our analysis team um, to see where we could shave weight um, with every highlight line and radius and then we worked with our supplier trying out a lot of different laminates we worked through several different iterations um, until we had something that we were happy with from a structural standpoint and then also uh, weight and stiffness out on the trail so one thing that really helped is we have two levels of frame. We have the SLR, which is our high zoot, ultimate lightweight package, and then our SL, which is pretty similar to the current bike. The SLR and the SL use the same frame shapes. Uh, we just changed the, the material that goes into them. And that uh, has allowed us to have about a 235 gram weight difference between the SLR and which the SL. Which is pretty significant. Absolutely, yep. yeah, it's about a half a pound. Yep. So with these light frames, we've got a 9.9 here behind us. What kind of bike weights are we talking now for the new bike? Yeah, so starting with a l the lightest frame set possible and then adding light parts is a, is a really good place to start. So that 99XX SL with a dropper seat post is 9.3 kilograms complete bike weight. Yeah, which is super killer because, you know, dropper seat posts are pretty common now. 
And I think you really need to look at that as a complete package and, and to be at that kind of weight with that is amazing. Absolutely, yeah. Having the capability without having the weight penalty on this new bike is game changing. Well, Alex, a lot of awesome work there. I know you poured your heart and soul into this bike and it really shows, so great job on that. I think everybody's really gonna be excited when they get a chance to ride this bike. Nice work. Thank you very much, I hope so too. All right, so we talked about the 9.9 SLR model. With the SLR, there are five models, and there's two models for the SL. All of these models have dropper seat posts and 110 forks to give us a complete price point range of the new Gen 2 Super Caliber. Keep in mind that if you're looking for a wider range of price points with a really efficient bike, we still have the Pro Caliber lineup. And or if you're looking for something with more travel, more trail characteristics, there's always the top fuel as well. Between all these bikes, there's a bike for you in the Trek lineup. Once again, we just wanna say thank you for taking the time today to listen about our new Gen 2 Super Caliber, and I hope to see all of you out there on the trail real soon.